talk about perfect complements in production, or sometimes referred to as fixed proportions. Perfect complements in production is going to be given by a production function of this general form. The way we're going to interpret this is that the firm's output, Q, or quantity of output, equals the minimum, M-I-N, the minimum of A times L or B times K. So for this firm, the production function tells us that the output of the firm will be the minimum of what's in parentheses here, A times L or B times K. A is, A is, um, excuse me, L is our usual units of labor, and K is our usual units of capital. A is going to be some parameter greater than zero, likewise B is going to be some parameter greater than zero. So in a lot of these problems we're asked to find the optimal input mix. You want to produce a certain level of output, so how many units of labor and capital should we use? This is fairly easy to find. For any given level of output, say Q star, the optimal input mix is given by these two conditions. The optimal units of labor, L star, is given by how many units of output you're interested in producing divided by that parameter A and the optimal number of units of capital you want to use is going to be given by how much output you want to produce again Q star divided by parameter B so you just need to remember this uh, uh, this result here Q star divided by A and Q star divided by B gives you the respective units of labor and capital. Uh, let's uh, do an example. Here the firm's output is given by the minimum of one-third L or 2K. And maybe in this example, we're interested in the firm producing 100 units of output. So we want to find how many units of labor should this firm use and how many units of capital. As I said before, to find the optimal input mix, I'm just going to do this. So in this case, our Q star is 100, our A is 1 third. Over here for units of capital, Q star again is 100, and B happens to be 2. So upon substitution, we want to use 300 units of labor and 50 units of capital. That would be your ideal input mix. We can verify that result by plugging these numbers back into the production function. If L is 300, put that in here. And if K is 50, we put that in here. So one-third of 300 is 100, and 2 times 50 is 100. So yes, this is the ideal way of producing 100 units of output, using 300 units of labor and 50 units of capital. Um, let's look at a, another example. There may be a, a simpler example. The quantity of output equals the minimum of L and K. Maybe we're a business and we provide school bus rides. So L might be our bus, uh, bus drivers and K equals a uh, number of buses. And in this case maybe we want to provide 10 bus rides. So 10 our output is bus rides. So what's going to be the ideal way of doing that? Well, we'd want to use 10 bus drivers and 10 buses. 
that would be the ideal way of producing 10 bus rides. Uh, we have to use these inputs here um, in this fixed proportion, and this fixed proportion is always one for one. One bus driver is matched up with one bus. So for example, if you wanted to provide 10 bus rides and you had, say, 12 bus drivers and only 10 buses, the best you're going to do here is only producing 10 bus rides. You have two more workers than is necessary to produce 10 bus rides. So the optimal input mix in this case always calls for using one unit of labor with one unit of capital. Okay, let's do one more example. This time the perfect complement's production function will be given by 4 times L and K. And maybe we have some information here that the wage that the firm pays is $100 per worker. W is the wage. R is the price of capital, and maybe that's $80 per unit of capital. And what we want to find here is what is the minimum cost of producing 16 units of output? What's the minimum cost of producing 16 units of output? So let's first find the optimal input mix. Well, we want to use four workers. And how many units of capital? Here B is just 1, so 16 divided by 1 is just 16. So the optimal input mix calls for using four units of labor and 16 units of capital. The total cost of doing this, TC, is just going to be the price of labor, the wage, times the number of workers, under times 4 plus the price of capital times the number of units of capital, 80 times 16, and this gives us a value of $1,680. That is the least cost way of producing 16 units of output. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful.